All right. Hello, 14ers, brothers and sisters. We are in for a blessing of a treat today. It is so magnificent. I spoke to some people on uh, Discord about it a couple days ago. I had a conversation on a piece that we're going to get into in the later part with uh, Ivan on Zoom over in South Africa yesterday, I think it was. <laughs> it's going to be jam-packed awesomeness. You guys will realize, look, this still says one day ago. Uh, it'll turn to two, I think, at around 5, 5.30 or something like that. But it's very rare that I do a video this soon. However, we know the season and time we're in, don't we, brothers and sisters? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. This is the date we're looking for. But you're going to see these connections. You're going to see these dreams and audibles. You're going to see <laughs> the 50 days groupings of 50 days. It is going to be so exciting. I'm going to show you we are here. I don't need to go into that other stuff again. I, You know, the last video, guys, remember the revelation in that last video where I brought up uh, a, a Christ, the birth, when, uh, when, when the Holy Spirit deposited Jesus, right? The Holy Spirit came upon Mary, the Virgin, and boom, the Father lined up for the first time with the King Star Regulus and then did it again. And then did it again. The Jupiter just kept going back and forth, back and forth, three times. And after the third time, on June 17th, that started, guys, on September 10th of 2 BC. You saw it in the last video yourselves, right? Anybody who hasn't seen it, you want to watch this video, I promise you. You want to understand the truth of what? Most of today's video is based in the revelation of the birth of Christ and why it matters now. There was a, there was a, a video posted that I hadn't seen. It was posted by, uh, by our brother Edwin and how I had come across it. It was about a week or two ago and how I came across it. I was, I was looking for something from, um, uh, from Ivan which we're going to talk about as well, which is directly connected. And as I was scrolling and looking through all the comments of Ivan to see where it was, I came across this video that they tried to get my attention on, but I never saw it. Well, you're going to love it. You're going to understand why they were trying to get my attention to post it. And by the way, guys, if there's something you really want to get my attention on, you could either just email the ministry or you can post in the forum from the website, the forum, um, you can just send me a private message. All right. So, man, it, it's so awesome. Wait till you see the count from Christ's birthday. Wait till you see the connections in scripture. It's going to blow your mind. You think you're excited now? You think I was excited when I was doing this last video? What you're about to see is the game changer. It's, it's the answer. It's the count. It's the whole thing. I thought this was interesting. This was sent to me by a uh, 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 brother John over in Greece. The, the Greek Orthodox, their calendar, look at where they've got in their calendar. And it's not just the Greek Orthodox, the, um, the uh, 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 um, Aramaic. So the Aramaic calendar, they follow this one as well. And Charles was telling me about it, that his cousins or aunts or something like that were telling him for years, oh, one day you'll realize that our count was right, that our Pentecost, we know what we're talking about, that ours is correct. Do you know when they have Pentecost? June 7th. When have we been telling us, telling Jesus' birthday, you see? I was looking at Sunday the 31st because we were we had connections. But we didn't know where to count for from the Lord's uh, uh, death and resurrection to, for the, and then for the first fruits. You see, we have a date for Passover. 
given to us in scripture. We have a date for when Unleavened Bread Week begins. We have a date for Tishri, for Feast of Trumpets. We have a date for all of these, except we don't have a date for Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks. It's, it's, a, it's a concoction of from this, wave this, count this, seven times, then this. But what Ivan reminded me the other day too, is that there's also not a count, there's not a date for first fruits. Very, very interesting. So the first count that we had from his death and resurrection equaled here. The other option we knew we had was right here. We were disappointed here. We've covered that in the last couple of videos. Where are we today? We are right here on the third. <laughs> okay. We're right here on the third after 70 years have gone by. The true 70th. And we know the books have opened. We know Zachariah says they will not observe the fasting and mourning of the fifth month, which is the ninth of Av. They will be destroyed before that, taken into captivity. Millions will be dead in Israel and in parts of the Middle East. That will all happen within less than 60 days from now. Okay? Because that expiry date is the ninth of Av. Okay? They won't observe it past 70 years of doing so, meaning they can't do it this year in the true time of the 71st year, okay? Remember the little boy we were talking about at the previous Friday, right? Last Friday, we were saying maybe that little boy, that Swedish boy, this ascension going to the mountain. I'm going to show you some things with that too. <laughs> he said, going to the mountain, remember? He said it was a Friday. I'm not going to go through the whole thing again, except make some points. That boy said on Friday morning, 7 a.m. in his time in Sweden, they were all taken to the mountain of the Lord. There was a great shaking. The mountain crumbled. We told the people in the area and then everybody got went back home. It seemed like a normal day and everybody was able to tell the, everybody they wanted. They didn't have to, but they had the option to tell everybody they wanted. What? that the escape was coming, that the quote-unquote rapture was coming on Sunday, okay? Here we are, set up for another Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and it's called the Ascension, okay? They call it with the Ascension of Christ. But I'm going to show you something here real quick. Just a little, a little side note here. Watch this. I've often wanted to do the study, and then it just it slipped my mind, and I never got to it. Watch this. See chapter 19? Remember we say chapter 20, the 14 years, begins at the 50, okay? So before the escape happens, then the 14 years begins. That'll begin chapter 20. What do we have here in this story? We have in the third month. Here we go again. See, in the third month, but it doesn't tell us when. See, what happened? When the children of Israel, in Exodus 13, 1, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. Verse 3, and Moses went up unto God. And tell the family, tell everybody, see, there's a peculiar people. See, those seeking and desiring the Lord. And then he tells Moses, go back down on, uh, on Exodus 19, 11, And be ready the third day. Okay, and the third day I will come upon the people at Sinai. Here's, here's this mountain. Think of this boy and this whole situation going on with this mountain. There's some sort of connection. Now, was it everybody? No, it was the men. It doesn't mean this time it'll be the men. Okay, it could, it'll be a combination, I'm sure. But I'm bringing this up because this connection again, and look at where it is. 19. It's the story in the third month. Going to the mountain. Sometime in the third month. Going to the mountain. The Lord meets with them and then be ready three days later. What, what are we talking about here? See, what are we talking about? We're talking about Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Wait till you see these connections. You guys are going to freak out. <clears throat> Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Going up the mountain. Okay? Coming back to the Lord. At the time of the rapture and the escape. Remember, we see and we're understanding and being revealed always with types and shadows, guys. We've seen the books that have opened. Well, now watch this. Here's 19. What if we go to chapter 34? What would that be? This, this is when the Lord returns, right? 33. And then what? 
2034 when it's over? Look at the conversation we have here when the, when it's over. When the Lord's there and he, the tablets again. What does he say? The covenant is renewed. Um, what does he go on to say? Uh, he makes the inhabitant, a, a covenant with the inhabitants. Cuts down the gro- groves. All the idolatry. Everything they were doing. Everything is cut down. And listen to what he says here. Starting in Exodus 34 verse 22. Remember what's 2034? The 14 years are now over. Think of it like that, all right? Starting in verse 22. And thou shall observe the feast of weeks of the first fruits of wheat harvest and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. Thrice in a year shall thou shall all your children appear before the Lord. When do they have to come and appear before the Lord? During all this time of tribulation? No, when the millennium reign is about to begin, when everything has been reestablished. And then what happens in verse 24? For I will cast out all the nations before thee and enlarge your borders. When do they all get their borders enlarged, guys? Remember we teach at the end of 2034? In fact, let me bring it up. Don't we show at the end of 2034, see? 2027 to 2034 when it's all over? The Lord returns in the spring of 33 after the sixth trumpet, fulfills the final year here himself, and at the end of 2034, so from spring of 33 to spring of 34, what is it? It's the final 14th year coming to an end, and it's what? When all the tribes are gathered back and they're being given land. See, I will enlarge your borders. Neither shall any man desire thy land when thou shalt appear before the Lord your God three times in a year. So I'm just bringing this up as a side note because isn't that an interesting connection? From 19 to 33, and here we are right now in the third month at a time when there's a possibility, if this little boy's vision was accurate, that there's going to be a group of people. I'm not going to say a whole bunch of us would know. I'm not even say, saying it's any of us. How do we even know? Except... Sometime this weekend, maybe there's people around the world declaring, it's time, it's time, Messiah is coming. That might be something to watch for, right? If we're not a group of people taken to that mountain. Remember, a group of people going to a mountain. Remember, a group of people maybe being trained to go up a mountain. (laughs) Remember that. (laughs) Here's a hint. Remember the story about my mug? Okay. So now let's keep going. (laughs) Let's keep going. Remember, the story is the third month, 15th day, which on Jesus' birth was June 17th of 2 BC. Okay, of 2 BC. June 17th of 2 BC was the third month, Savan, 15th day. This year, that day is June 7th right in line with things we know where they should be. Well, let me ask you something. Check this out. I think uh, Ivan might have said something to me, about, said this to me uh, a while back, but I wasn't looking at this connection with Jesus' birthday when I think he mentioned it. But check this out. <clears throat> this is from health.newyork.gov. It's, I typed in how many days is a typical pregnancy. So what would be like a perfect pregnancy, right? A perfect pregnancy would be right around 280 days, or in fact, it would be 280 days or 40 weeks. Let me show you something. Let's take, it doesn't matter what year. We're going to take 2020, the year we're in, just for an example. 10th day of September, okay? September 10th, 2020, and we're going to add 280 days. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? If Jesus was actually conceived at that sign when we showed in the last video and the Lord went back so that the Magi could follow and see going back and forth and back and forth and nine months later Venus comes by again and joins up with the Lord on that day and that is the the star, the actual brightest conjunction that they had seen, that was it. And it was June 17th, the day of his birth. Exactly what? Well, if it's if Jesus is perfect and a perfect conception is 280 days, guess what? Ta-da! The video showed you guys that on September 10th, 
2 BC, 280 days later, a perfect pregnancy is June 17th. You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> you get it? You can't make this up, brothers and sisters. So please understand. Please understand where we're at. We understand what's going on. It's true. Okay? Remember, we're all connecting this to his birth and this season and time that we're in right now that we're understanding for this Shavuot, Pentecost, new wine. What are we talking about? What's this connection? Keep watching. How about this? Remember our little sister Mila, our beautiful little sister Mila? She turned eight on March 14th, right? And prior to that, we had had many uh, conversations. Her mother watches Ministry Revealed. And she felt she needed to share some things with me. And when she did, and I put them in a video, our brother uh, Charles was listening to the video. And he said, what? He, he understood the words that were being spoken. So we have this conversation and I talked to Charles about these words and he's like, he says, those are Aramaic. And so we start talking about these words and it was beautiful. Here's the comments. I'm going to prove to you. Look, there's no editing in the comments or anything. This is this, her mother right here. Okay. Listen to this. So her mother had told me about the, about the Aramaic words that her daughter was getting. Now, uh, she didn't know they were Aramaic. I showed you guys in a video when this happened several months ago now, uh, the video where Mila says that she heard him say um, it had to do with reward. Okay, It had to do with your reward or reward. And uh, the words that she got, she just kept saying, Hashkarabishta. And she was all excited. Hashkarabishta. But she didn't know what it meant. She had no, she had no understanding. And neither did her mother, neither did I. Some people said, oh, it's like the gov like uh, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, hasta la vista. No, it wasn't hasta la vista. It was hashkarabista. Okay? It was pronounced something along those lines. So I share this with, with Charles, and we're going back and forth. He's he's half Aramaic. And his family's Aramaic. And they got they got family that's in the church, the ancient that, that knows ancient Aramaic, the whole nine yards. Charles goes to his family and so forth. And to make a long story short, most of you have, have heard this. Charles comes back and he says, brother, he says, it's amazing. Because the way the Lord said it, he was addressing her as if she was a little girl, but as his sister, but that she was younger. This is what, it, this is what happened. Uh, here's what he said to her. This is the translation of Hashkara Bishta. See, Hashkara Bishta. Okay, this is what the Lord said. I give or gave my life for you. My sister, that's the way it was addressed. That's what it means with the cut, the ka in front of it. With the kara, Charles explained it. It means like mine, my sister. And almost like a, like a younger sister. My sister, and this is greater evidence. See, this is what I was saying right here. And this is greater evidence because if it was just kara, it would have just meant sister, as in any. But kara with the extra T-A means my sister, which is much more specific. You see? So he said, I give or gave my life for you, my sister. And bishta, you are covered or with my cloak or my outer garment. And I said, does that sound familiar? So haskara bishta means, or better yet was, I gave my life for you, my sister. You are covered by my garment. Now, why would the Lord give that to our little sister Mila when she's seven years old? Because her mother felt the prompting to send it to me. Well, what does that have to do with me? Yes, we've got an incredible revelation of end time understanding of scriptures opening like never before in the history of the world. It's true. But why Aramaic? She didn't know it. But she felt she, she should. And here we've got our brother Charles that came in the fall of last year, late summer, early fall. And what happens? He understood it and he shared it even with his family. And they were like, what? How does this little, how does this little girl over in Australia 
only knows English, how on earth is this possible? You see, and they start saying, whoa, this is incredible. Then, and I'm bringing that up to make a point, guys. If that was true, what else does she have? She gives us another word. Her mother says, brother, I have another word that Mila got. Uh, see what you think. Mila received another word or words, not sure. Can you ask our brother who speaks Aramaic, speaking of Charles, the word is Huskiki or Huskiki or Huskiki kind of sounds like Kiki. So, of course, I go ask my brother Charles and I start going back and forth and back and forth. Charles is asking his family, even though he understood some of it, he's getting confirmations, right? There's 200,000 of them in L.A. in the Aramaic church and he's got family and friends and that's where he goes. OK, or we used to go, by the way. OK. And here's what he comes back with. He says, it's amazing what the Lord told her. Uh, Joe, daughter to school. Da, 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 da. Actually, I can just go right down here. He, I talked about, I put all, typed all this in for. Uh, when using the word kli, it can mean listen. And it says kli kli. It's like a command to pay attention. Listen to me carefully. So he goes on to say kli kli. Uh, so Hush Kli Kli means with great authority, listen to me carefully, get ready now. It's an urgent call for attention to pay attention. Now, remember, Mila doesn't know this. Her mother doesn't know this. She sends it to us out of this prompting she felt from the Holy Spirit. Charles gets it. He understands it. He confirms it with family and then he comes back and tells us what it is, and she gets another one, and it's huskly clee to say, get ready, get ready, get ready, pay attention, time is now. And what did Mila also talk about? She spoke about a reward. God said that this, this be ready, get ready now relates to a reward. And why is this important? We talked about it, remember? Even just recently, we found this much later. Numbers 754. On the eighth day, this is the day we're waiting. Day one of the next set of seven. Day one of the 14 years, right? Right, boom, we go, and then that time starts. And listen to what it says. Number 754. On the eighth day offered Gamaliel, the son of Peduzer. Watch this. Okay, we've shown this before. Reward of God. So on the eighth day offered the reward of God a rock that is God Yeshua of course has ransomed how many times have we gone into the word ransom and it's only in Luke remember the redemption that word is only in Luke so what do we have on the eighth day the reward of God the rock has ransomed. Hello. See? Now, the reason I'm getting into this, the reason I'm bringing this up about our sister Mila is because it's very significant. If we've gone into all these things about our dear little sister and we've understood them, she obviously, she has a conversation, by the way, with her mother in one of the videos and she says, well, what does Jesus look like? And she goes and she looks at her mom. She's like, like, or, I don't know. What do you mean? She's like, I've seen him like a, like a million times. She goes on to describe what he looks like. And he's shining in his beautiful white garment. You see, and she explains his hair and his eyes and, and what he's wearing with that white garment and a yellow sash that comes across and what he was wearing on his head. You can't, when you see the way she speaks, when she looks like, uh, like it's just matter of factly, you see, it's amazing, amazing stuff. You realize she is, she has met with the Lord. She has spoken with the Lord. He has shown her things. And if all these things were true, Charles wasn't lying to us. Charles wasn't making this stuff up that it was Aramaic. He showed me the words. And the definitions. 
She was speaking a, an ancient Aramaic, but with just a, a, a an English accent. You know, just a, just speaking English. It was crystal clear that those were the words. So if those were the words, what else did she tell us? Do you remember her story? Do you remember the story when our little Mila was in heaven? Do you remember when she told us when she went up to heaven and and the Lord, there was a great big room where Jesus was and there was this massive long table. And at the end of the table, like on another little one there, there was these rewards. And then she came out of that room and when she came out of that room, there was a great big open space, she said. And in this great big open space, she said the people there on their clothes, there were black spots. There was black spots on their robes. How was that possible? Her mom said, what? So Lauren says to Mila, what do you mean there were black spots? She says, will they always have the black spots? Are like the black spots are going to wash away? And she says, no. They're going to have those black spots forever. And we all said, what? Wait a second. How on earth are there people in heaven with black spots? That's not, That doesn't sound right. And then remember what happened? Just maybe a couple months later. Okay, that was maybe three or so months after. Here we have our brother comes on. We have a brother that's reached out to me who's been watching since late last summer or fall. And he was the Baptist minister, right? The Baptist pastor. He's traveled around the world. He's healed people, cast demons out. He raised one guy from the dead. Yes, he raised the guy from the dead. Okay, <laughs> he told the story. He went in to tell us what the truth and the importance is of baptism. And when we did this video, a whole bunch of people ended up going and getting baptized, remember? Don't forget about that for those who haven't been baptized. I will tell you right now, if you're not baptized, get off your butt, pause this video, and do it as, as Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Go do it right now and don't waste any time because there's not much left. Literally not much time left. And he's explaining and he, he's going into the scriptures and why he wanted to get in touch with me. Because he ended up leaving the church that he was, was co-pastor with. Because they were in a dispute because the Baptist church says you are to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But he knew that it wasn't right. We are under Christ. It is in Christ Jesus' name like Acts 2.38. Why were all the apostles baptized? All oh, everybody in the disciples, the apostles, and everybody they went to. Why did Philip baptize the eunuch? Why did they all get baptized if it wasn't necessary and still not necessary today? They all did it in Jesus Christ's name. You see? So he had been conflicted with that with the church for a long time. So he said, no, he says, I'm not going to do it. In fact, he ended up baptizing still in front of the whole church in the name of Jesus Christ. And when he did, the other pastor came running over kind of nonchalantly and said, and in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You see? Craziness. So he comes in and he's explaining these things to us. And as he's explaining these things to us, remember John chapter 3? He takes us to John chapter 3. And as soon as I read it, I understood. And I know all of you guys did as well. Remember, I'm building this for a point. John 3 verse 3. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Meaning you could repent and be born again. I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. But you know what? You're not going to be able to go to the third heaven. You know where you're going to get to go? You're going to get to go to paradise only. Now, is paradise a great place? Yes, it is. But if you're still alive when the tribulation begins and you're not baptized, you're this one. Just believing in Jesus Christ, loving him, believing him as your Lord and Savior. Yes, it's important. Yes, it's part of it. But it's incomplete. You will remain during the tribulation of seals and you will go through your testing and if you die before your baptism 
Yeah, you'll go. You'll end up going if you died in a disaster or a war or something. You'll end up going to paradise eventually. Eventually, because the rest of the dead will not be raised till the end. You following? So where do you want to go? Now, why does this matter? Look at what he says in verse five. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So if you repent and you believe in Jesus, you're not, you're not going to be, you're only, sorry, you're only going to see the kingdom of God. You're only going to see the third heaven, but you're not going to be able to enter into it. But those who have repented, believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and are baptized in the water with the Spirit, they will enter into the kingdom of God, meaning into that portion of the third heaven. What's the difference between the third heaven without going too far off track? This is the difference. You can go in the escape, which is like a rapture, this group is going to the third heaven. This is the group leaving in a few days. Or you can hang out during seals, having just believed in Jesus Christ but not been baptized. You'll end up staying during seals. If you don't survive, you'll get to paradise, or you might just end up being raised at the end, actually, at the end of 3,000 years, by the way, at the end of the millennial reign. But that group that only believes, they will go to where? Paradise. Do you remember the thief on the cross in Luke? Right? Jesus hanging there, thief on the cross, and what happens? He says, remember me when you get there. Right? He, he believed that it was Jesus. He repented by saying what he said. And Jesus told him what? Tonight you shall be with me in paradise. Why didn't he get to go to the third heaven? He repented at his death. A true repentance, but he repented at his death. What did he believe? He believed in Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. And so the Lord saved him. And he's only now able to see the third heaven, but he's not able to enter. He was allowed to go to, the, to paradise, which is fantastic. Paradise is great. But do you want to remain for seals too? What's the difference between just believing in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and being baptized with the receiving of the Holy Spirit? What's the difference? believing in Jesus Christ. And this is why this video with this pastor was so, so important. It was the revelation of all revelations and we were able to understand it right away. And how, why did he want to come and speak with me so that to share with all of us was because when he came to start, when he came to start watching Ministry Revealed, uh, I think summer of last year, he saw the revelation of who the gospels are speaking to and he knew instantly, oh my goodness, that's the answer. He saw and he understood. If Luke, if Matthew, Mark, and Luke is Luke, Mark, and Matthew, and Luke is to the Gentile bride, and Mark is to the left behind church, and Matthew is to the Jews, and Matthew 28 is right, is at the very end, at the end of the, of the 14 years, when they're going to go out through the millennial reign telling everybody, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Why are we baptizing like that now? You see, he was already doing the right thing. And once he had that answer, he knew he was correct. So what was the difference? Remember our little sister Mila? How is it that when she turned and went to that other section of heaven and it was a great big open place, she saw people with spots on their garment? Do you know that this brother, when he was telling us the story and the differences... When you're covered in the blood of Jesus, what is it? Your sin spots, your black spots, your spots of sin that are on you. When you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, those spots are covered by his blood. We all know that story. We've all heard of it. And when the blood dries, what color does blood turn? Black. It's like it soaks up the sin and the sin's no longer there, but the blood is still, it's still on your garment right? It soaked it up and now it turns black. Well, how are they? How, that's the group that's in heaven. That's in uh, paradise. That's the group that she saw. So how did they, how can they get there with having black spots on their body? It was the dried blood of Jesus Christ that covered over their sins. That covered over their sins. 
The Father cannot see them because the blood covers it. So what's the difference then with the baptism? Once you receive the gift and believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you get the water baptism and it washes it all away. It's all washed away. And you have the Holy Spirit dwelling within you. That you will, you even you might struggle sometimes, but you will know and you will repent. You might have a little thing, maybe you're an impatient on this or something, but you will correct it. You'll say, Lord, please forgive me. I didn't want to do that. Please, Lord, forgive me. And it'll just be washed away. That's what I pray over each and every one of you and your families every single night. Everybody in this ministry, my family, your families, that they all be washed away. And that those who haven't yet gone to the baptism and the remission of sins in Jesus Christ's name for the receiving of the Holy Spirit, I pray that over those who haven't yet done it either. Because it is the difference between the third heaven and paradise. It's the difference between going in the escape and wading through seals. So how is it that our little sister, having given these words, having seen people in heaven with spots on their clothes and nobody really being able to understand it until we figure it out why how could she have seen all of these things been told about the reward coming and then what and then all of the sudden she was wrong about this remember we're talking about somebody's birthday remember that Check this out. This is from another video. So this is her mother, Lauren, again. Wow, uh, this is me. Sorry, this is me commenting to her. Wow, you brought uh, tears to my wife. Uh, you know, there was a word. So this is just a few months ago, right? You know, there was a word in November you told me about that Mila, she said 2020. She had asked what 2020 meant. I told you guys about this, right? I told you guys about it. When... She asked when the Lord was coming, and he said, 2020. And she didn't know what it meant. So she turns and she asks her mom, and she says, Mom, what does 2020 mean? And she's like, uh, she thought it was like a math question, right? She didn't know it was about Jesus. She just said, what does 2020 mean? And she's like, math? She says, no, Jesus told me he's coming 2020. And of course, this was last year, right? November or so. And so her mom's like, oh my goodness. It, it, she, he's coming in 2020. That's what he told you. That's next year, honey, right? Well, this is what also he said. She said, Jesus said he was coming 2020. And she also said her brother would speak on her birthday. On her birthday. You see where I'm getting at with this, brothers and sisters? Do you see what I'm getting at? Here's this little seven-year-old girl. She's had these incredible visions and meetings with the Lord. She touched his hands the first time he came to show himself. She knows what he looks like. She's been to heaven. She's visited. She's felt one time going up in the spirit, like, like floating up and then coming back down. Meets with them so often, she says, Mom, I've met him like a million times. This is a seven-year-old at the time. And she's had all of these things. And we could understand them. We could discern them. We have understood and discerned them. And suddenly the, the Lord Jesus Christ tells her on her birthday. And her birthday was March 14th, saying that her brother would speak on her birthday. And March 14th came and went. And what happened? She was very, very upset. She was very disappointed. Right? And there were some foolish people out there, not here in this ministry, but there were other foolish people that gave some really negative comments that the video came down, so I can't show the video. Okay? But we knew there had to be something going on with it. After everything she'd given us, after everything she'd experienced. Because you know why? I will guarantee you that what she had heard, what she had most likely heard, what he had told her, was on my birthday, your brother will speak. 
She was seven. What, what would that translate to you? On my birthday. Oh, on my birthday. My brother's going to speak. No, he said, on my birthday. I will bet you it was on his birthday and maybe she just misunderstood. You see, just like giving those those Husklikli and, and, and Huskarabishta, she didn't know what that was. She didn't know when, when these people had black spots on their garments what it meant. But yet here were people out in the big open area of heaven and they had spots on their garments. How was that possible? She didn't understand it. How about the, the little Swedish boy? The little Swedish boy had no understanding when he said there was three raptures. His dad never taught him because his dad didn't know there was three raptures. His dad thought it related to Passover, what the son was talking about. So he put dates and months on it, but the son never did. The father thought it was Passover. Yet the story of what the son was talking about, the story that the son was talking about was Exodus 19, the time frame of Pentecost. You following? Or the time frame, maybe we should say, of Shavuot. That's what he was counting. That's what he was seeing. But his father, with not understanding, took it down thinking it was Passover, put dates on it, and took everything down. But the power of the internet, had, other people had it copied, right? I think that is exactly what happened with our little sister. There is no way in my mind that he told her 2020, all of these things that she's experienced, we've discerned them, we've understood them, we backed it by scripture, outside of course of the words, but we still backed it by scripture with rewards. And then he said, on your birthday? No, I will guarantee you, Mila, our little dear sister, you're right. You were just misunderstanding of when he said on my birthday. It was on Jesus's birthday. And how are we going to prove it? I'm going to give even more support for you this year. This moment right now. Look at where we are. He's talking about his birthday. Did you guys not see the calculation? September 10th, 280 days was June 17th. What was June 17th? June 17th of 2 BC was Savan 15. Oh yeah, you guys keep remembering Savan 15. So our little sister Mila, anybody who tried to rebuke and say false prophet and all that, first of all, I don't even think she was being prophetic. She was just speaking what she was seeing and what she heard. But you're going to want to swallow those words. Repent for those words you spoke about her, against her. Because he told her, my birthday. Are you ready? Are you ready for what comes next? Listen to this one. Listen to this one, brothers and sisters. This little girl had a rapture dream, <laughs> just so you're aware. Look at when it was. What's 6-6? Six, six? See that? June 6th. <laughs> June 6th, come on, come on, June 6th of 2012, June 6th this year, if you're living in the United States, is what? It's the beginning of the 6th of Savan, uh, sorry, the 15th of Savan. Christ's birthday begins at sunset here. She's here on the 6th in 2012, June 6th, and she's talking about, <laughs> get ready. Okay, she's talking quietly, so you're going to have to really try to pay attention. But I'll turn this up and hopefully remember to turn it down. She had she had this dream of the rapture. Okay, and she explained some of it. You guys can go watch it yourselves. Here's her channel. This is a video that was shared that I hadn't seen, that I told you looking for stuff with Ivan. This is the video that came up, and it was shared by Edwin. Listen to more than one thing she says. I'm going to pause, but you're going to, you're going to hear it. I was like, oh, this is it, this is it, this is the rapture, this is the rapture. God, is, Jesus is here, he's coming, we're going to go. And then we stayed um, for just a few. I'm going to tell you what. We're staying and we're rejoicing. 
I'm just gonna blessed be the name of the Lord, and everyone is just happy and stuff. And um, I we were celebrating because we were celebrating like it was God's birthday. That's what I meant. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? They were rejoicing and celebrating, she said, because it was God's birthday. On this rapture day that she's talking about in her dream, the Lord said it was God's, it, it was revealed to her that it was God's birthday. Remember, that's what the purpose is we were celebrating and um, being stuff. And um, I, we were celebrating because we were celebrating like it was God's birthday. That's what I remember. That's what the purpose is. We were celebrating. And um, towards the end of the dream, someone said, um, we went to Jesus in the middle of the street. And he asked them, um, when are we leaving? And he said, right after we finish celebrating God, my father, or something like that. And I was like, ooh. Ooh, yes, we yeah. have like, ooh, yes, we're happy, we're getting ready to go. But as we were screaming and rejoicing, we also had to keep in mind that we couldn't be too loud because this wasn't in the neighborhood, in the street, it was nighttime, and people were asleep. <laughs> I don't want to bust your eardrums. Her dream was rapture was coming they she had gone for a walk with this neighbor's kid and she's walking all of a sudden there's people in white clothing and she hears a trumpet blast and all of a sudden there's this celebration and she's like whoa i never felt i could experience such great joy on earth this is incredible and she says they were celebrating and, and they were, she was wondering why they were celebrating and they were celebrating and rejoicing god's birthday and so this other guy goes to the Lord and says, what, what are we celebrating? Uh, when do we get to go? Isn't this the rapture? He says, yes, but we go after his birthday celebration is over. <laughs> I love it. Come on. Come on. There's a confirmation for you, brothers and sisters. Right here in the season and time we're in. Do you think she knows Jesus' birthday is June 17th? No, right? June 17th, which, or when he was born, but we know that on the Hebrew count, on his calendar, where it's counting, it's the 15th of Sivan. See? <laughs> that was so awesome. I love it. We're going to listen to a little bit more. Sleep. And we didn't want to wake people. And it was like the same thing as how this... This rapture, um, only the holy will see him, and they will be the ones able to go. <laughs> and the crazy thing is also, and um, when the trumpet sound, it's gonna sound like thunder to people who do not go in the rapture. And uh, but to those going to the rapture, they're gonna hear trumpets, and it was just so cool. Um, so towards the end, uh. As the celebration was over, we we're on the brink of leaving, right? And this, this is this is uh, comparing to Earth right now. We are on the brink of leaving. We do not know when, but this is the end of the church age, okay? And um, as we were getting ready to leave, we all gathered together, and I saw how little the amount of people were. It was me and my friend, and all the other people. I think the street preacher was there, and um. And all these people who have risen, people who have come from, I think, heaven, I don't know, in white robes and angels, and they're all preparing to go up and shoot up into the air. And it was just so little. And if you don't believe me, take it to the Lord and ask. But the amount of people going to the rapture, it's no more than 5%. It's 2 to 3%. Did you hear, did you hear that? Did you guys hear that? Again, if you didn't hear it, go back. You guys can go to the, her channel and listen to this video. It's June 6, 2012. She said, then once the, the celebration, the birthday had come to an end and they were about to go, they all gathered together. She says, I wasn't sure, maybe some resurrected from the dead, some were angels, I'm not sure. But every, they were all dressed in white. In white. Not spotted. In white. And so they're all dressed in white. 
And she says, we're all about to go because the celebration had just ended. And we looked around and I knew that it was less than 5% of the earth. And she says, guys, if you don't believe me, take it to the Lord. She says, but it was more like 2 or 3%. Hello, I got my goosebumps, got my chills, guys. Do you remember the videos we've been teaching here for probably two years now? If you take, for example, 8 billion and you multiply 8 billion by, I think, 1.8% because it's about 2%. Maybe it's 1.8 or 1.9% because it's about 2% of the population of the world. It equals... 144 million people. Do you know that the church is believed to be about 1.4, 1.5 billion people? 10% of 1.4 to 1.5 billion people is what? Give or take around 144 million people. About 2% of the population of the earth equals 10% percent of the church which are the ready watching repentant spirit-filled people waiting and praying and seeking the lord with all their hearts that is the gentile bride that is the first fruits of the harvest from the church the great multitude will be those who remain during seals which will be the greatest apostolic a, a, a revival in all of human history but it will only come at the price of the tribulation of seals do you understand how exciting this is i'll guarantee you she doesn't know jesus's birthday is really the 15th of savan not many do i proved it in the last video we have her little sister mila saying her birthday but really it's his birthday here she's saying it was God's birthday we were celebrating, and at the end of it, we could go. Do you know when that is? Right here. At sunset on the 7th in Israel, guess what? It's time to go. And then what do we have? About an eighth day. What happens next? Do you know what happens next from the 15th of Sivan? Well, shouldn't it be the Lord's 40 days? Isn't that what we keep talking about? Then the Lord's got to be here for 40 days. Right? We've talked about it from Luke chapter 21. We've talked about it from Luke chapter 17. That relates us back to the story of Noah. What happens when these 40 days then begin? Boom. Bride is gone. Then what? Remember the story? We covered it. We covered it all the time. Noah and his family get in the ark. When the 40 days are over. Look at that. Genesis 8, 6. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days, Noah opened the, win uh, opened the window in the ark which he had made and he sent forth the raven. At the end of the 40 days, when Messiah leaves, when he is here doing these miracles and wonders for 40 days, during the time of chaos, because millions of people had vanished, remember that. <laughs> remember June 17th. Remember the 15th of Savan. Remember. Okay? The bride goes first. We are in the ark and gone. Celebration of the birthday, all the excitement, the trumpet blast, and we're gone. Then the 40 days, the 40 days, sorry, will begin. These 40 days where they're already in the ark, see, like we would be on the at the end of June 7th. Then the 40 days begin. At the end of 40 days, the Jesus, Messiah, leaves. His 40 days that he said he would fulfill as Jonah. As Jonah did. That's why it's in Luke, not Mark, not Matthew. When those 40 days are over, he leaves. And the raven is sent out. The raven is the Arab. Is the Antichrist spirit that will enter the Arab. And we know the dove has a connection to what? Ten days later. Ten days later. Okay? From the end of the 40, we know the Holy Ghost is the dove. We'll go out ten days later. 
for a total of 50. But wait a second. The bride is already gone. Didn't we already experience this 50? I thought there was already a 50 from Christ's death and resurrection to this 50 count. There was. There was. But you're going to see the other one. And it's the second one. <laughs> You'll see when we get there. This We're going to get into that just in a few more minutes. Okay? So what ends up happening? This is the conversation I had with Ivan to explain this this these 50-day counts. And Ivan just went, oh, that's making sense. You see, you're going to see it because let me ask you this. If we're the bride, if the bride... Those accounted worthy with gorgeous, white, perfect robes are gone at the start of the 40. At Christ, after the end of Christ's birthday, boom, the bride is gone. And then the 40 days begin. Well, let me ask you, does the dove go out at the beginning of the 40 days? Does the dove go at the, at the escape of the Gentile bride at the 10%? Like she said, that 2%, approximately 2% of the population of the earth? Is that when the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost goes out? Or does the Holy Ghost go out 50 days later? If the Holy Ghost went out at the beginning, well then when Jesus comes, he doesn't have to pick anybody. The Holy Ghost came, the Holy Ghost empowered them all. They, they'll have supernatural powers as great as Jesus, we're told in many cases. So... Jesus doesn't have to come and do anything. Jesus doesn't have to choose them. Jesus doesn't have to direct them. You see? Because the Holy Ghost doesn't come here. The Holy Ghost doesn't come here. You ready? Okay. Just remember this as we move on. The bride is gone at the end of the 7th. Okay. The 15th of Savan. And then we'll touch on this 50. Because remember, remember these types and shadows. We're always looking at types and shadows, right? What did Jesus say in Luke? In, uh, in Luke, actually, first, let's go to Luke. Where am I? Let's go to Luke 11. What did Jesus say he would be like? He said, as Jonah was unto Nineveh, so shall the Son of Man be to this generation. Jonah was what? He was the 40-day sign. Jonah was the 40-day sign to Nineveh. Okay? Jonah was. So Messiah, as the Son of Man, will be that 40-day warning to the earth during that time, just like he said. When we go to Luke 17, check this out. At Luke 17, Jesus says, But first, I must suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. See, they ate, drank everything until the day they entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. What is he saying? So we got a type and shadow of him being 40 days like what? Like Jonah. Then here, he gives us another type and shadow, which is the type and shadow that when Noah and his family are in the ark for 40 days, he is Messiah is going to be here during those 40 days doing the things like he said with Nineveh. But not with Nineveh, but uh, uh, as, um, as Jonah. We also know the son of man is Ezekiel. Ezekiel is told to give them that warning. We know that warning is relating to a 40-day warning. And Ezekiel was portrayed as the son of man. It's a type and shadow over and over and over again. It is a type and shadow. And it's the story repeating itself for us over and over again. See? And it's all landing clearly now on his birthday. There is no other year. I know I don't go, need to go beat that down over and over and over again. We've proved it for a long time now. There is no other time in human history this is possible because... They've already begun their 71st, but the Lord is counting at 14 equals 50, right? 14 equals 50, all right? So they cannot get 
to the fifth month, ninth day. They cannot get to the ninth of Av without having been destroyed. And for Israel to be destroyed, the escape must have already happened and the Lord's 40 days must have already happened. You following? You following? Here's June 7th, 2020. If we add 50 days, we end up on July 27th, 2020. July 27th, 2020 is right here. That's the 50-day count. Israel must be attacked and destroyed before the 9th of Av. So they must be attacked and destroyed, fleeing already before this time, so that they can't observe it. And the 40 days must have already happened. And the escape of the bride must have already happened. Jesus is 40 days from the 7th, meaning starting from the 8th, would be what? The 17th of July. The 25th of Tammuz. Do you see what's happening? Do you see how we're running out of time? There's no other possibility. You understanding how her dream, why it was, whoever heard that before, brothers and sisters, whoever heard that it was God's birthday and they were celebrating, that was the relation to the rapture. Here we have two young girls in a row. We have the young boy that told us the whole story of, remember, the mountain. We have the boy telling us the story of the mountain being gathered at a mountain. We know that it's in Exodus 19. And then there's three days later, the Lord is here and everybody's celebrating. It's the Lord's birthday. And then bam, the rapture happens in what? The 14 years begins. Watch this. Now, this is what Ivan shared. This is from Sparrow Cloud 9. This woman, I sent her an email. You wait till you see why I sent her an email. Remember, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, well, how about these three? Mila, uh, that other young girl, and this woman here. This woman, this is what uh, uh, um, uh, Ivan had shared. He, he found it when he was looking for stuff relating to... Remember I said, remember June 7th, okay? Remember June 7th, and still, don't forget the 15th of Savan. <laughs> okay, this was the site. I sent this woman an email about a week ago, a few days ago, maybe close to a week ago, and I haven't heard back from her yet. I expect to hear from her or from her to post something that she had heard something from us. And you're going to understand why in a moment, okay? Watch this. This was the post from Ivan. This is from her. It's called, she typed it up. It's uh, Aaron's Dream 62. Check this out. June 7th, newscast of millions missing. Are you excited? <laughs> she didn't post. She didn't make this this year. This was from Sunday, May 12th, 2013. Listen to this. I was in the spirit and was observing I was looking at some people, and you'll see, if you guys go to this uh, this woman's website, you'll see she has many, many dreams and visions that the Lord gives her. There's one that I'm not going to get into, except maybe just touch on a couple points on purpose. Remember I said, remember the mountain? Remember I said, people going to the mountain, people climbing mountains. Remember that? Okay, I'm going to touch on it on purpose, which I think may have a connection to this ministry, uh, to some of us in this ministry. Okay, so remember that as well. So this is one of her dreams or visions. I was looking at some people in a living room waking up with the morning news. A TV anchor was on a special report. Check this out. He said, if you are now just waking up on the West Coast this morning of June 7th, you will now come to realize the sad and very tragic event that has just occurred. There is complete chaos you are to remain in your homes. Do not go outside, but remain where you are. Many people have suddenly disappeared. Mostly children. I repeat, do not leave your homes. Because June 7th, millions have vanished. Millions have vanished. Are you ready for this? 
This was May 12th of 2013, June 7th. Do you think she understood what June 7th was? Do you think that little girl, uh, the, the other little girl understood what God's birthday represented? Okay, check this out. She then has a conversation with the Lord. This is what he said. Aaron, these things will occur. It is no longer a matter of if, as this has never been used. It is a matter of when. Do you understand? She says, Lord, is there anything more that I can do? Do I share this information? Jesus says, Aaron, the date of June 7th. Look at this. Guys, I didn't type this, okay? I didn't type this. <laughs> Neither did Ivan. This is from this woman from her vision and dreams. Aaron, the date of June 7th you were given has significance. Look at how that's highlighted. Has significance. What June 7th in modern history in the period of time at the completion of seven years, uh, of 70 years, with 13 years being counted to the Lord's return, feet down on the Mount of Olives, when he will fulfill the 14th year himself, which would be the end, which would be spring of 2034 when that ends, just like we showed from Exodus. What other time in all of human history does June 7th have any significance with the Lord's birthday? on June 7th, lining up to a time frame dated for the quote-unquote rapture escape after 70 years of Israel's completed time with a nation, a people, and including the government, what on earth would have a significance of June 7th in any other year? Now you're going to understand why I sent her an email. Jesus says, Aaron, the date of June 7th you were given has significance. Listen to this. This is for you to unfold it. Be cautious in doing so. This will not be popular and you will come under great scrutiny for it. This is okay. I am here with you. And she says, I'm unclear of uncertain of the year. Listen to what he says. You will know by the overwhelming evidence. Okay, things going on in the world, understanding the season and time. Aaron, I have given you friends in this season. Who do you think the friends are, brothers and sisters? They're us. They're brothers and sisters in Christ. Why is he giving these friends in this season? Fellow sparrows and others to help you with what you cannot have time for. These gifts are beyond what I have given you. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? The Lord tells her, there's gifts that you do not have that are beyond the gifts you have. There are greater gifts that have been given Hello? How about the opening of the books? The understanding of end time scriptures. Scriptures being revealed like never before. All of your friends will help. You will know of my upcoming or the time of the first great distress by the signs. They will require many different gifts from many different types of people. These will be music to your ears, but sandpaper to the enemy. Do you follow, guys? Do you follow what's going on? June 7th is of great significance, has significance. And on June 7th, the waking up, the time frame on the West Coast, they're screaming, why on the West Coast? Why on the West Coast? Why does it matter on the June 7th on the West Coast? Think about it. Evening in Israel, sunset in Israel, coming back to that morning time frame, give or take morning time frame on the, on the West Coast. You see what's going on? June 7th, 
15th of Savan. <laughs> I know you're excited, brothers and sisters. Please understand, we are here. We're here. This is it. We were just off in understanding where the Lord was counting from. That's it. The 14, 15th, the 50th equals 14. The whole thing is true. The whole thing is true. Okay? Now you just saw this wowness of June 7th and its connection to the Savan 15 and Christ's birthday. Why they were celebrating Christ, uh, uh, the, God's birthday on the rapture day. Watch this. Remember what I was talking about a little bit earlier? <clears throat> Remember? The bride is gone at the beginning of the 40 days. They got in the ark. Boom, the door shut. What did Luke 17 say? Jesus said those days will be, those will be the days of the Son of Man. Everything will be fine until, boom, the door was locked. They're in the ark and the door was locked. And the 40 days began. That's the craziness that will begin. And what did she say? What would happen? What were they saying in the news? Remain in your house because there is complete chaos. Don't you think it's going to be chaos when almost 2% of the population of the world vanishes? 10% of the church vanishes? We've got it, brothers and sisters. We've been revealed. Okay? Let's keep going. Watch this. The feast of the first fruits of wine. Now, why am I going to the first fruits of wine for? Well, if there was a 50 day count that got us to this point so we can understand Christ's birthday, and then he's here for 40 days, and it lasts 40, and then there's 10 to the dove, well, doesn't that ring a bell? If the bride is gone first, and this is the Pentecost full come, sorry, uh. And Acts chapter 2 is Pentecost full come. Well, wait a second. Remember how I said those types and shadows? One was related with Nineveh. One is related with the ark. Do you think, do you think there's going to be suddenly a, a great big ark that we all get on? No, it's a type and shadow for us. Do you think when the Lord comes and he does the 40 days, he's only going to Nineveh? No, it's a type and shadow. It's going to be for the whole world this time. You see, all of these things were types and shadows to give us the understanding and reveal to us the, the, the truths and, and how to see it. Well, let me ask you another thing. If Acts chapter 2 is from Christ's death and resurrection, okay, is 40 days from when he returns and then he leaves and there's 10 more days, doesn't that sound familiar? Doesn't that sound exactly like the story of the ark? There was a count, bang, the bride got in, the door was shut, and then 40 days began. And then another 10 to the dove. So if we're already in the ark, and really when we look at the count, I mean, come on. When we go to the count, it's like, what are you saying, Alan? Look, here was Passover, the resurrection, we have done the 40 days. The 40 days brings us into here somewhere. So, and uh, sorry, and the 50 days already brings us to here. Well, isn't it over? Why would you go back and look at, a, at the 40 day from Christ's resurrection? Isn't it already happened through this, what we're talking about already? Yes, in the story, in the, in the talking of it, in the counting. Yes, it has. But in the story of the type and shadow of his coming again for 40 days, we can look at it in Luke chapter 24, just like we did in the past. Remember Christ? Remember Luke in order? Bride goes in chapter 1. Jesus comes for 40 days at his birth. <laughs> Jesus comes, remember? Remember the whole story, Luke in order? When is there's a story in Luke chapter 2? So Luke chapter 1, we've got the escape. Luke chapter 2 is the 40 days from Christ's birth. Luke chapter 3 
is the beginning of trumpets when the Lord has finished seals and he's at the beginning of trumpets. That's the escape of the bride. It's his coming for 40 days. It's his coming at the end of seals to start trumpets when he's going to do his ministry for the Jews. And then we go to chapter 4 and it's when he comes the third time when he comes feet down on the Mount of Olives and it's the final 40 days and it's Satan who's been here and is being tempted by Satan one last time. All in order. So what did we have? The connection to Christ's birth. Remember? The connection to Christ's birth. June 7th. And it was what? 40 days is the connection? Well, when we go now to Luke chapter 5, like we said, we had 1, 2, 3, 4 in order. And what is Luke chapter 5 all about? Jesus, Jesus choosing his disciples and apostles, appearing to them, going out and speaking in the boat, and then telling them to bring in this, go out and fish. So he teaches them how to bring in a great multitude of fish. And then he tells them, now I'm going to make you fishers of men. Why? Because this group that he's choosing here, these apostles, these disciples that he's choosing, that are going to work during the time of seals, during the time of seals, who he's choosing to work during 40 days. They're going to become fishers of men and they're going to bring in a great multitude. It's the great multitude of the great revival. It is the great multitude of the rapture that we see in, Revel in Revelation chapter 7. The great multitude now brought in that no man can number. He teaches them first with fish and then he tells them they're now going to do it as fishers of men. You see, when he comes for his 40 days, there's a type and shadow also of his birth. But he's not coming as a baby this time. It was to give us understanding and revelation to when he's coming. June 7th, celebrating his birthday. Escape. 40 days then start. Connected to his birth. But when he will come and choose disciples and apostles for the greatest time of revival in human history that will begin the apostolic age. But when did we see that coming in the type and shadow of the New, of the New Testament? We saw it by going from Luke 24. You see, by coming to Luke 24. Do you remember when we taught on this? Remember Luke 24. Remember I just said, it's the escape of the bride in Luke chapter 1 in order. Then chapter 3, 2, 3, and 4. Are his 40 days, are his return at trumpets, and his return at the end of trumpets when he's feet down on the Mount of Olives. So what are we looking at here? At the end, at the last chapter of Luke, Mark, and Matthew. It's describing when he comes for his 40 days in Luke. It's describing when he comes feet down, uh, sorry, when he comes at the end of seals to start trumpets in Mark, we've covered it many times. See? Preaching and working, having received them. When we come to Matthew 28, this is when he comes the third time, feet down on the Mount of Olives. You see? There's a great earthquake. There was light. He's like lightning from one end to the other. We know that when he comes feet down on the Mount of Olives. He then tells them that this group is going to go out and teach. They're not going out to preach anymore because there's no more need of preaching because he is here. All power in heaven and earth is now his. He's now here on earth. The whole world will know it. So these guys are going to go teach to observe what the Lord commands them to teach the people. And he says, I am with you here until the end of the world because he's now here till the end of the millennial reign with them. This is what we were talking about earlier. This is that baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy of the Holy Ghost. You see, this is where he baptizes them. Where they're to go out and baptize everybody in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost during the millennial reign. It's no longer in Jesus Christ's name. That time's over. You see, it's over. So what are his comings? Here's his feet down on the Mount of Olives. Here's his return at the end of seals to start trumpets. And what's Luke's? His 40 days when he starts. And how does it begin? Do you remember when we did this video about it? Luke 24, verse 3. This is only found in Luke. Verse 3 and 4. 
and they entered and found not the body of Lord Je- of the Lord Jesus. They found not what? They did not find the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The slaves, those dedicated, the sound whole body of Christ. You see? Who? Making whole. The body of Christ, his bride. Listen to what it says. Verse 4. And it came to pass that they were much perplexed. This is only found in Luke. That they were much perplexed. So the body of Christ was gone and they were perplexed. Do you remember when we did this teaching on it? The word perplexed, bewildered or bewilderment means perplexed or confused. So bewildered, bewilderment means perplexed. So we have the body of Christ gone and they were perplexed. Do you remember when we spoke about this in 2nd Ezra's uh, chapter 13 verse uh, starting in verse 29? Behold, the days are coming when the Most High will deliver those who are on the earth. Escape of the bride. And bewilderment of mind shall come over those who dwell on the earth. Hello. Hello. And bewilderment of mind shall come over those who dwell on the earth. There will be complete chaos as it was in the days of Noah. This chaos that will reign out. The Lord will be here revealing himself with signs and wonders. But the 90% of the church remaining, most of them will believe that Christ is actually the Antichrist because they think Antichrist comes at the beginning. Even the Muslims know there's a guy for 40 days first who they call Dajjal. Al Dajjal. They're going to say with the, Mus- with the Christians, they're going to say, see, here's your Antichrist. Don't believe him. Our guy is coming who's going to rule for seven years. <laughs> see? Don't be fooled, anybody left behind who's listening. It is Messiah. It is the Messiah for those 40 days. And he's going to do incredible signs and wonders that even the Muslims say from their book that it's going to be hard to distinguish that he's not Jesus. You see, they've been fooled. Wake them up with these truths. Wake them up with these truths. So if Luke 24, if this is the bride is gone and then they're all perplexed. What is this the start of now? What is it? And this is the third day. And who shows up? The Son of Man is walking. Who? The Son of Man. The Son of Man is walking with them the third day. Let that sink in a little bit. When all this takes place, this is what? This is about him choosing them. They're going to be, their eyes are going to be open. They're going to be given understanding. Right? They're going to understand the scriptures. Do you remember what the Lord said? Remember what the Lord said? That all things must be fulfilled which are written in the law of Moses. That's where we teach from, isn't it? Part of it. And in the prophets. Whoa, that's where we teach from, isn't it? Part of it. And in the Psalms. Whoa, wait a second. That's where we teach from, isn't it? At least part of it. Concerning me. These things written in those books that still need to be completed about me are about to take place. And then what's he going to do? Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures this is all about his 40 days and then there's his ascension being carried up right 40 days is coming to an end when we come to acts chapter 1 what do we see it's the continuation they're standing there and they're looking up and in verse 3 it says to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days And speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now what are they told to do? Now they're told to go wait with the rest. He's going to return. He's going to return as you saw him leave. Now go back. Go see. And he's taken up in a cloud. You see in Luke 21's discourse after those 40 days. 
that portion of tribulation for the 40 days of those that are going to be with the Lord, realizing who he is. There's going to be many persecuted and killed during that time. And at the end of 40 days, he's received up in a cloud. These guys are told to go to the upper room where the others are. And they went and abode where the others were. Right? These disciples came back to these guys where they were waiting. And then what happened? You come to chapter 2, which we know is 10 days later to Pentecost. And it says when Pentecost was full come, they were in one accord and the Holy Spirit came. And as the Holy Spirit came, they, they received, they were speaking in tongues and all these things. Well, listen to this. We've got the revelation, brothers and sisters. We have our answer. There isn't 150. There isn't 150. There are three. And there are two that connect to the start. Watch this. Our 50 count is coming to an end. The bride of Christ is about to vanish out of here by Sunday night. Then the 40 days will begin, which is the same type and shadow as the ark, as Jonah and Nineveh, as Christ's resurrection and the body being gone and everybody being perplexed. You see, when we looked at this, remember? God takes out a group of people and then bewilderment, the perplexity of those who will remain dwelling on the earth. And then what happens? They shall make war against one another, play people against people, city against pe city, kingdom against kingdom. See, what is this? The red horse rider time. What is this time then? The white horse rider when Messiah is here during this time of bewilderment. During this time of bewilderment. And what happens at the end? Messiah, 40 days, boom, he's gone. Wait, wait a short time. This short time is 10 more days. The Antichrist spirit is here. He's gone out now. He's on the earth. And then 10 days later, on the 50th day, these guys receive the Holy Ghost. And what happened? What season and time is this? Which 50 days is this? This is the clue. Acts chapter 2, verse 13. Others mocking said, these men are full of... Only used one time. How significant do we say... How important do we say it is when you see something one time? It is extremely important. What does it say? These men are full of new wine. What on earth? Why is this telling us new wine? And what were all these people coming from everywhere? What were they doing there that everybody can understand in all these languages when they were speaking and they all understood in their own language because these guys are now Holy Ghost filled? What were they all doing there? They were at the festival of new wine. Do you want to know, brothers and sisters, when this festival of new wine is? Hold on to your seats. Because you're about to jump out of them. Are you ready? Are you ready? Remember this? June 7th. Remember the 15th of Savan. Remember his birthday? Newscasts, everybody's vanished, millions have vanished. Are you ready? The feast of the first fruits of wine. Okay? The feast of the first fruits of wine is a holiday celebrated by the ancient Israelites as purported in the temple scroll of the Dead Sea Scrolls. The holiday is observed on the third day of the fifth month. Okay? That's, again, on the way they're counting in their calendar, it, uh, is not mentioned in the Bible. The date is significant because it is exactly 50 days. You ready? After the 15th of Savan, the feast or festival of weeks. Boom! Mic drop. I got a pen. <laughs> how about this mic drop brothers and sisters we got it it's over it's finished it's complete you understanding it's over the ancient israelites celebrated the festival of new wine and the apostles at Pentecost 
We're being accused. You following? We're being accused of being filled with new wine. They were being accused by a bunch of people outside who were there to observe or to enjoy the festival of new wine. So when is this 50 days to Pentecost? To the feast of new uh, to the festival of new wine or the feast of first fruits of new wine? When did this take place? It was 50 days later. And how can we show it? Remember what I said? Is Jesus, let me go to what is is Jesus when the 50 days in this count of Shavuot is over? Okay? When Shavuot is over, let's understand. <laughs> let's understand, brothers and sisters. There was no Pentecost prior to. There was Shavuot. So what has the church done? We've Everybody's combined, for the most part, not everybody, but many have combined them together. Didn't they do that with the seven years? Didn't they do that with seals and trumpets? Aren't we unraveling that mess? Haven't we unraveled that mess? You see, with the escape coming here, the escape of the bride being here, why would the Holy Ghost come here and give them that, that Acts chapter 2 right here? Why would he do it here when Messiah comes here? Isn't it Messiah who chooses the people, uh, uh, gives them, uh, um, tells them what to do, he will show them how to fish, and then tells them to go wait because it's, it's the Holy Ghost that's going to empower them? Why would the Holy Ghost empower them when Christ comes? Messiah's got to fulfill those 40 days. See? It doesn't line up. It's 50 days later. And look at what it said. The date is significant because it is exactly 50 days after what? Didn't I tell you to remember that one? Because it is exactly 50 days after what? What does that say? The 15th of Sivan. 50 days from the 15th of Sivan is the next 50 day count. That 50 days ends on July 27th, 2020. Do you understand the significance, brothers and sisters? Do you understand how this one term being full, that they are full of new wine. Do you understand the significance of how and why it shows up once? Please let it sink in. Watch this video again if you need to. Share it with everybody. This video is the answer. This is it. There is no other time in any other year where it will be on his birthday, where there will be the next true 50-day count from the 15th of Savan, which was the end of the feast or festival of weeks. And they were being accused of being drunk on new wine. You guys can go look it up for yourselves. Even to this day, Jews still celebrate in early mid-July. It's a celebration that they have, people coming to observe the festival of wine. The, I believe the, the Greek Orthodox and the Aramaic, they celebrate it late, late July or the first week of August. You see? The new wine that they were drunken on isn't in the early June. It's impossible. They were drunken on the first fruits of the new wine. Get excited, brothers and sisters. I'm so looking forward to meeting you. I'm so excited. It's beautiful. It's perfect. 
We've done it from the Torah, like he said, the law of Moses. We've shown it from the prophets. We've shown it from the Psalms. We've shown it from the Gospels. And we've shown it right through to Revelation. It's true, brothers and sisters. I love you. I love you from the top, bottom fullness of my heart. We're here. Remember what I said about the 14ers? Remember what I said about this? Remember I said this, this climbing? What about this climbing? What about this mountain? What about going up this mountain? What about all of these things? I just showed you that mug, right? That mug is from a place in the U.S. with a group of people that are called 14ers. These 14ers, see 14ers.com they even have. This group of 14ers, they climb mountain peaks that have elevations of at least 14,000 feet. There are 96 of them in the United States. I thought there was 50-something. There's 96 in the United States, and they are called 14ers because they what? Because they climb the mountain peaks. They are called 14ers, brothers and sisters. Well, you know what else? Check this out. Shared this a while back too, didn't we? Do you know this one? Quarto decimism. <laughs> I'll leave that one for you guys. This is a group of people in ancient Israel back 2,000 years ago after Christ's death and resurrection when he had left. This group here, called the Quadrosium, whatever it is, controversy, arose from Christians in the Church of Jerusalem and in Asia Minor who observed the Lord's Supper on the 14th of the month. No matter the day of the week on which, uh, uh, while, uh, sorry, no matter on which day of the week it occurred, while the churches in and around Rome changed to the practice of celebrating Passover on Easter, always on the following Sunday, for Nissan 14. This group of 14ers, they're called literally 14ers, back almost 2,000 years ago. They were called the 14ers, you see? It means 14ers, 14ers. And what had happened is they refused to obey the church in just making this day every year and calling it Easter. Because they were bastardizing the whole thing, right? Easter, Esther eggs, all that stuff, right? They were committed to Christ. They were the ones dedicated to Christ, following the Lord, loving the Lord, seeking him always and trying to be as true as they could possibly understand to his word and to his truths and to the scriptures being given, that had been given. And many of them paid the price with their life. Do you know that here at Ministry Revealed, you hear me in every video say 14ers? All right, hello, 14ers. I did not know this when this ministry started. I was calling us and call us 14ers because we had the revelation of the truth, which was 14 years. You want to know if we're in great company? We're in some of the best company that ever lived because it was a group that refused to succumb to what the church was saying and to follow the truth of scripture to the best they knew. And they were called Fourteeners. How about that? Well, you saw this other Fourteener, right? This other Fourteeners is a group of Fourteeners who climb mountain peaks. Check this out. This is that sparrow cloud as I finish up. This is from a dream she had on May 26, 2020. This was this year, uh, um, obviously, uh, just a few days ago. This was shared by Ivan, and it's amazing. Our preparations will include extraordinary training. I'm not going to read it all. I'll just give you a little uh, a, a tidbit. There were eight of us at a base camp at the foot of a massive mountain. 
the camp was in an area that consisted of red dirt. Think of what? Maybe Egypt. Remember what the little boy said? It was in Egypt. Even though it seemed to be a high desert type region, there were very few trees. The base camp consisted of a structure similar to a salt box type dwelling with wood walls and a metal roof. Well, it seemed warm outside. Inside the dwelling was cool. Due to the warm weather outside, we were all dressed accordingly with lighter clothing. The base camp had an instructor. You'll find out as you guys go keep reading it that this base camp instructor was actually an angel. He was two to three feet taller than every human there. And there were eight people per cabin, she said. And they all had an instructor that was an angel that, would, that had been trained by the Lord that has come to train this group. Now she ends up saying... She ended up looking around at one point and she saw around this massive mountain there were thousands and thousands of these little cabins, each one of them with an instructor and eight people inside. He was training us to climb this massive mountain. <laughs> I don't want to get you guys nervous or anything, but you think maybe we're being given some hints? <laughs> some of us, maybe? <laughs> the, the mountain was where we would see God. The preparations began on the evening of a certain Friday. <laughs> Isn't that what the boy was saying? On the evening of a certain Friday, instructions were completed in eight days plus a final day. In other words, this went from Friday evening to the evening of the second Sunday. There was a group being trained by the Lord who went up at this point and were trained until this point. When you go on and you read these powers and what they did and, and what had happened and the supernatural things that took place, wow. Wow. Ivan and a number of others were just so excited thinking, man, is this really a possibility of being some of us? The powers and the things this group will be able to do is, is mind-blowing. And it'll be right in line with what? It'll be right in line. Right? It'll be right in line with a 40-day period. When the Lord's here with a group that he's chosen. Remember, she goes on to say, I think they, they could leap over walls and they'll be able to do all these sorts of things. Do you guys remember that? Do you remember Psalms 18? Remember I kept saying Psalms 18, I believe is about a seven day period. And this group that is rescued at the end of it, they will be able to bend steel weapons in their arms and leap over buildings. They'll have giant leaps giant steps if they want them she was describing these people in her story describing them crushing rocks in their hands and people would just be amazed brothers and sisters 14ers i want you to know and to understand we are here we're here we knew things would change on march 11th the end and the start of the new year, the 71st year, on March 11th. And this year with a leap year, 70 days from January 1st was March 10th, the end of 70 years, including when Israel had their government. And on March 11th was the 71st day, the beginning of their 71st year. And for months, we were saying, wait till March 10th, 11th, wait till March 10th, 11th. Did we think it was the escape? Yes, we thought it was the escape, but we knew something would change. And guess what? The global pandemic was announced. Take into account everything you've heard here today, everything you've heard over the past several months and all of the revelations of scripture, all of these things put together, knowing that you can't count another 13 years, knowing that you can't have another end of 70 years knowing that there is no birthday of Christ any other time this year. Put all of these things together, brothers and sisters, and pray 
and keep watching and keep seeking. And for those who haven't yet been baptized, to wash away the blood that has soaked up your sins, to wash it away so that your garment is gorgeous, beautiful, white, just like Luke's light, white, gorgeous, beautiful robe. Get baptized in Jesus' name, Jesus Christ's name, for the remission of sins and the receiving of the Holy Ghost. Do it now. I love you guys. I'm so excited to meet you very soon. So, so, so excited. God bless you. God bless you and your families. Talk to you very soon. Bye for now.